for this video, I'm showing you how to go from a traditional pinch pot to what is going to have a dome with a point to it. So one of the things that I am doing with this is I start with my paddle. Once I have done a significant amount of thinning, that's when I'm ready to start shaping it the way I want it to be. Your paddle is going to be an important part of this process. I'm going around, making sure that I make this symmetrical, going around multiple times, and I'm patting the clay towards the center. It may create a hole, totally normal. It does happen. You can prevent it by as soon as you see a hole forming, grab some more wet clay and fill it in. You can fix mistakes like little holes that appear if you're using a paddle, sometimes that happens, especially if you're going from a flat bottom to what mine is looking like more of a pointed bottom. So let me turn this to the side so you can see. So the idea is that I am, I've already thinned the inside multiple times and now I'm taking the bottom and I'm patting it into a point. I will have to store this upside down. Any work that I do on the rim, I can no longer put this on the banding wheel unless it's upside down. Each time I go around with the banding wheel, I'm patting it so that it can, you know, so I can shape it to the way I want it to look. And then when I go to the other side, you'll see that the insides, oh, it's looking kind of messy. I can no longer put this on the banding wheel. I'll have to do all of my trimming now while I'm holding it. No big deal, that's just part of the process. It's a little bit more awkward, but even though you have started shaping the outside, you still need to maintain the inside. And yes, you most likely have to go back and do trimming again. Trimming is going to be the most important part of this project. It's a really good foundation for understanding how to work with clay. Trying to get all that extra clay off.
Another great thing to know about working with clay, especially as it starts to move between plasticity stage and leather hard, your fingers can do a substantial amount of smoothing. As I'm demonstrating right now, I'm just running my fingers across the clay and it truly is going to give it a nice finished look. I'm not saying I'm done with it, but it's really important to be able to smooth your clay out. When you're using a paddle, it does leave a little bit of a texture behind. What I wanna do is go from, um, I guess you could say somewhat textured to very, very smooth. All right, now I'm gonna hold it on its side. If you look here, I'm gonna to try to get up close. There's actually a bit of texture there. So I'm gonna go over that with my finger. It kind of looks a little bit more shiny after I've gone over it with my fingers. These are all things that help to give your clay that really polished, finished look. Again, it doesn't mean that we're done with it, but before we start adding textures, it is really helpful to be able to have nice, smooth clay. And again, this is really not something you can do in the plasticity stage. It's more of between leather hard and plasticity stage where I really do this smoothing with my fingers and it makes all the difference in the world. So now look at this side, even though it has a lot more crumbles on it, look how quickly I can go over that with my fingers and it's really going to give it that polished, finished look. It is important, even if you're adding textures, it is important to do this with your clay. I'm by far not even close to done with this, but I am getting to the point where I'm done shaping it. Moving into the area where I start adding details and textures. And before I do that, I'm just going around and smoothing everything with just one hand using a finger. Okay. Any imperfections I see on these edges, I still have to work on those. As it starts to harden and move into the leather hard stage, that's when um, you know a lot of the textures are going to really be able to um, show up nice and neatly, whether by carving or adding. Okay, so giving you a nice view. Each time I do smoothing, it just makes such a big difference and is an important part of working with any type of ceramic project. Smooth, smooth, smooth that surface with your hands. Your fingers are gonna be your best tool, especially um, with this particular project. All right.